I've put um, videos in your in your Canvas modules. This one for week eleven that discuss what we're going to discuss today, but in more detail. Vertical function transformations, horizontal function transformations, and how to graph function transformations in my math lab. Your homework asks you to graph the, tr the, the function, the transformed function. You'll know what I'm talking about when I'm done today. Um, the method that you use for graphing is different from the methods you've used before. And so this video will tell you how to do it, how to graph your homework in my math lab. OK, I believe it's absolutely necessary for you to watch these videos because they go into more detail than we will have time for today. OK, so all you have to do is click and watch. And the notes up here, the function transformation notes go along with the vertical and the horizontal transformations. All right, let's look at what's being transformed. There we are. These are what we call the basic functions. Now there are lots and lots and lots and lots, maybe an infinite number of functions, but we call these the basic ones because these are what you deal with in the beginning of your math career. So we have a horizontal line. We have the line y equals x or f of x equals x. We have the absolute value of x. y equals the absolute value of x, which is for all intents and purposes of v. It comes to a sharp point. These are all in what we call their home position before they're moved, what moves them, coding moves them, and what transformations is. What we're doing today is we're coding the basic functions to move to a different place and to be stretched or shrunk in either a vertical or a horizontal way. That's what transformations is all about. It's about coding. So if you took a coding course in high school, then you already know, basically, you'll find this easier. If you didn't take a coding course in high school, then you'll find it a little bit harder, but you can do it. OK, let's look at the other basic functions. Y equals X squared or f of x equals x squared, y equals the square root of x. Oh, notice that y equals x squared is rounded at the bottom. It never comes to a sharp v, like the absolute value function. Here's y equals x to the third, and y equals the cube root of x. We're going to be moving these around. But first we have to talk about the anatomy of functions. So for those of you taking, uh, what is it, anatomy and physiology. Today we discuss anatomy, but it's different from the anatomy of the human body. Okay, let me make sure that everything is okay up here. Yes, it is. All right, functions have an inside and an outside. Let's look at what I mean by that. Y equals X squared. Well, you can put parentheses around the X and put other numbers in there. You can put parentheses around the X in 
f of x or y equals x to the third and put number other numbers in there with the x. The same thing for the absolute value function. You can put other numbers inside with the x. With uh, f of x equals the square root of x or the cube root of x. You can put other numbers on the inside with the x. That's what I mean by the inside. All right, here I've put parentheses around the x. And so we've got whatever other numbers you put in here, this is on the inside, whereas out in front and out in back is the outside of the function. All right, when you've got an inside, you have to have an outside. Inside is in parentheses with the X. Outside is out in front and out in back. Here in the absolute value function. Try to make that X a little bigger. Numbers on the inside of the absolute value bars with the X are on the inside and then out in front and out in back are on the outside. And in the root functions, numbers underneath the radical with the X are on the inside. And then you've got an out in front and an out in back. The inside of the function is called the argument of the function. And from now on for the rest of the semester, we're going to be talking about the argument of the function. The argument of the function affects horizontal movement and horizontal shape. You'll see what I mean as we move along. The outside of the functions affect vertical movement, up and down movement, and up and down stretching. So the outside of a function affects the Y coordinates. Anything vertical has to do with the Y coordinate of a point. A point contains an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. And let's see. I am going to put, yes, I am going to go to airplane mode today, even though I don't like it. All right, there we go. All right. Um, the outside of the function affects the y coordinate, which is vertical, affects the vertical. And uh, the inside of the function, the argument, affects the x coordinate, or the horizontal motion or horizontal shape. So let's talk about this. Probably the function you're most familiar with is y equals x squared. It's certainly the one that I am most familiar with. So let's put that in the graphing calculator. y equals x squared. Here it is. Now, if I want to affect vertical movement, I'm going to put numbers out in front or numbers out in back. For instance, y equals x squared plus 4. What this does, x squared 
plus four. is it moves the parabola, the graph, up four units. All right, if I write y equals x squared minus three, this is on the outside behind the function, the argument of the function. Um, that minus three is going to move the graph down. Here we went up four units. Here we go down three units and I'll make that happen on the graphing calculator. X squared minus three. There it is. We just moved down. We moved the basic graph down three units. That's what this did. So you can control the vertical shift up and down by either adding or subtracting a number behind the function, behind the basic function. These are called vertical shifts. Vertical can be up and down. Notice it goes directly up, directly down. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's move to the front. What does the outside front do? Well, one of the really fun things it does first, let's look at the basic graph y equals x squared. If I want to flip the graph upside down, I put a negative in front of the x squared, like that. Negative x squared. Turns it upside down, flips it upside down. There's a name for this. Reflection. Across. The X. Axis. This is a reflection across the x-axis. A negative sign in front of the function is a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, I'm gonna clear that now. Because now I've decided I want my function to lose weight. I want to lose weight. I want to make this skinnier. I'm going to change the shape. Here's what I'm going to do. I 
I'm going to put a number greater than one. Okay, this number must be greater than. one for me to be able to make this skinnier. Let's look at what happens. Three times X squared. What I've done here is, is I have multiplied the y coordinates by three. This is called a vertical stretch. When you put a number in front, when you multiply the function by a number greater than one, it's like you pull the function up. Okay, that's a vertical stretch. Which makes it skinnier often, or it just makes it higher. But what if I don't want that? What if I want what if I want my graph to be lower and closer to the x axis? Well then, this is what I do. Suppose instead of 3 I multiply by, so I'm putting it in parentheses, one divided by three, one third x squared. So what I'm going to do now, is this. One third x squared. Let me write what this is called. This is called a vertical shrink. And that happens when the number in front, outside in front, is a number between zero and one. In other words, it's a proper fraction. A proper fraction, comma, a number between zero and one. So let's call that number A. A is strictly between zero and one, not equal to zero, not equal to one, but strictly between them. Here's what that would look like. Now, let me get rid of the skinnier version, which is here. That's what that was. And um, just so you don't get it confused. Um, there. 
there's the basic graph, and there's the shrunk graph. That is, the Y coordinate is shrunk. The Y coordinate is multiplied by one third. The Y coordinate of all the points. multiplied by one third. That that makes the Y coordinates smaller numbers, which makes the graph lower. Here's the basic graph, but now the arms are lower. They're closer to the X axis. I could change this number to See, um, the y coordinates, y coords of all the points multiplied by one third, which makes them smaller. I could make this lower yet if I were to change one third to one eighth. All right, let's do that. going to change the three to an eight. There's the basic graph. There's the shrunk graph. That is the Y coordinates have been shrunk, so the graph is closer to the X axis. This is higher than that. That's what a vertical shrink is. So the outside of a function controls the outsides control control. Vertical reflection, that is reflection directly across the x-axis. Vertical stretch or shrink. and actually physically moving the graph up and down. That's vertical shift, vertical shifts. You can shift up, you can shift down. That's very straightforward. I would even dare to say it's easier. I find it easier and very straightforward. For instance, behind plus four, I know, means move up four units. Minus three means go down three units. I think it's pretty clear, pretty straightforward. That's not true of horizontal movement, horizontal stretching and shrinking. That's the hard stuff, for me anyway. So we now move to horizontal movement. And stretching and shrinking. Horizontal stuff. Takes place in the argument. Inside. Inside the function which is inside the argument. 
or inside the function argument. So let's look at y equals the square root of x this time. Although we could stay with y equals x squared, I just want you to have some other experiences. So here's the square root of x. And I could move it up five units by saying the square root of x plus five, the square root of x minus five. Ah, but I should actually write it out y equals the square root of x plus 5, with the plus 5 on the outside, would be a vertical shift up 5 units. Let's look at it. Now I have to hit the right arrow key, or for older calculators or older operating systems, I have to close my parenthesis and then type plus five, like that. You must make sure the plus five is on the outside of the argument because vertical movement is outside. There we go. I just shifted that up five units. But let's look, look at what happens when you put plus five underneath the radical, when we put it in the argument of the function. I want you to be able to compare them. Notice that X plus five is underneath the radical. With the older operating system, the plus five will be inside the parentheses. You're gonna close your parentheses after the five, so you'll have X plus five. Let's see the older. Square root sign. Paren X plus five. Paren closed. That says the same thing as this. All right, now look at what happens. Look closely. Saying plus five underneath the radical moved this basic graph over to the left five units. This is a horizontal shift to the left. Now, I don't know about you, but that plus sign would make me at least expect to the right. But it doesn't work that way. Horizontal shift left. Here's what's happening. 
the basic graph starts at x equals zero. So if we set x plus five, the argument equal to zero and solve for x, we'll subtract five from both sides of the equation. And that will give us x equals negative five. That is left five units. So nothing about numbers in the argument are what you expect. In fact, it's very much like they're opposite. Not really, but it's easy to think that way. Well, what if I say y equals the square root of x minus four. This is a vertical shift down. Because this is outside the radical, outside the argument. Right, so I'm going to say x, square root of x, close the parenthesis or hit the right arrow key, and then say minus 4. Not negative 4, but minus 4. There's y equals the square root of x y equals the square root of x with a minus four on the outside end to the right, the right end. Now, let's look and see what happens if I put the minus four in the argument. Okay, I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to change the window so you'll see better. This isn't going to change the graph, it's just going to make it look larger. There's the minus four underneath the square root, which is in the argument. Well, I screwed the goose. This should be negative 10. This should be positive 10. Now, it's the y's that need to be shorter so that you can see the up-down movement better. Imagine, let's do this again. There's the graph y equals x squared. Here's the graph of y equals, um, y equals the square root of x. y equals the square root of x. y equals the square root of x minus 4. We went to the right, 4 units. You would think that minus would make it go left. But here's what's happening again. The basic graph of y equals the square root of x starts at x equals zero. That was cool. Um, if I take the argument x minus four and set it equal to zero and solve for x, I'll get x equals four. That is positive four, which means we go four to the right. So 
So that's how you can be sure which way you're going when you've got a number in the argument. Now, let's look at something else. y equals the square root of x. Now, remember that if I did this, this is a reflection across the x-axis. Okay, so let's go back. Let's clear this. Now I'm going to type negative sign, the square root of x. Graph. Ooh, that's cool. What I did was I took this and I flipped it upside down. It's a mirror image now across the x-axis. It's a reflection across the x-axis. That's a vertical reflection. Why? Because that negative sign is outside the argument. But what would happen if I would move it, move the negative sign inside the argument? like that. Let's see. I'm going to delete that, move into the argument, and put my negative sign there so that I have the square root of negative x. Let's graph that. There's the basic graph. There's the reflected graph. This time, this is a mirror image of the original function, but across the y-axis. We call this a reflection across the y-axis. Okay, finally, this time I'm going to use the basic graph. Oh, let's stick with what we're doing. Should I? Yeah, all right. No, I'm not. I am going to use, because you need to get used to it, math, right arrow key, abs, the absolute value function. Inside the absolute value bars is the argument, and outside is outside. Okay, let's look at the basic graph. It's a V, just the way it should be. Now, notice this. Let me, let me do this. I am gonna change these now just to give us kind of a magnified view. There you go. Now it's more symmetrical. Nah, not symmetrical, but better for my purposes. All right, if I were to put that number greater than one in front, outside, in front of the function, then this is what I'd get.
a skinnier graph. This would be a vertical stretch. What if I were to move the three in with the X? Now these are hard to see, but remember, this is going to do something different now. So math, num, enter, three, X. It actually isn't going to do anything different. I picked the wrong graph for this. But let's look at it. In this particular graph, you get the same thing. So I should not have even used this. I should have stayed with that. And there's a constant worry for teachers about what's going to be visible to students. So I'm going to go back to. Um, ooh, I could use the cube root, couldn't I? I want you to get to know these graphs. OK, so math. Cube root is here at four. Cube root of X. There's the basic graph. Y equals the cube root of X. Okay, now. Now, watch what happens if I do this. That's going to stretch. That's going to multiply the Y coordinates so that it moves away from the X axis. So no, that wouldn't be good though for this. This is not the square root. So let's say five times. The cube root of X. Five times math. Four. X. Ha. Look what, pretty good. My math lab did that all by itself. I think that's a sign you need to uh, put parentheses around the cube root of X. Maybe. See, look how it got stretched up. Wow, that is cool. Okay, now, this is a vertical stretch. Okay, I'm gonna clear this. Well, actually, I'm gonna delete. Nah, I'm gonna clear it. Because what I want to do is this. What I want to do is this. Math. Num. Not abs. Just math. Four. Good grief. All right. Now, I'm going to put the five in the argument. And you're going to see something interesting. There's the basic graph.
Now there you see less of a stretch. It's not a stretch. Let me tell you what this is. What's really happening is that the X coordinates are being divided by five. So the X coordinates are smaller, but the Y coordinates stay the same so that you're actually getting something like an accordion movement. The graph is being squished like this. Squished. This is a horizontal shrink. And you get a horizontal shrink by multiplying the X by a number greater than one. Whereas, I know that's hard to believe, but you've just got to take my word for it. If I were to change five to one fifth, and one fifth and point two are the same thing, this is a number less than one. Well, between zero and one. So I'm, I'm going to change. Am I, should I do that? Yeah, I am. I'm going to change this to one fifth, which is 0.2. Oops, X, there you go. 0.2 X, look what happens. There's the basic graph. Now, while this looks like a vertical shrink, it's not. It's actually a horizontal stretch. And what I mean by that is it's like you held on to each end of the basic graph and you pulled it out so that it's flatter. This is actually a horizontal shrink. These argument numbers, these argument, the argument stuff is really confusing. You have to kind of work it out in your own head. Horizontal um, stretch. So notice that this is the opposite of the vertical. If I were to put a point two out here, it would shrink vertically the graph, but a point two in here stretches the graph horizontally. So that's the difference between horizontal. You need to restart your computer later. Okay. So. There's a big difference between vertical shifting and horizontal shifting. Let's look at the homework. 
No, no, no. This is what I want. Oh, notice my math lab is working today. Knock on wood. At least it was working earlier today. Um, I need to insert some pages. Not that much, but what the heck. Okay, now this. This is your homework. This is your first problem. And you get to look at the video, but let's analyze this. You have g of x equals negative one fourth times the square root of x. Okay, negative one fourth times the square root of x. All right, we need to talk about this. Here you've got two separate transformations. That's the way they're looked at. Now, these, both of these are outside in front, so they're going to be vertical. They're going to affect the vertical. This one fourth will cause you to have a vertical shrink. This negative sign will cause you to have a reflection across the x-axis. In other words, it will flip the graph upside down. So what I do now is I go to these di different boxes. The basic graph is f of x or y. f of x equals the square root of x. Then, okay, we are going to shrink this vertically by multiplying each y coordinate by one fourth. Finally, reflect it across the x axis or the y axis. The x axis. Check answer. Now we need to choose our graph. Well, you know now, or you, you know by um, looking at your list of basic graphs that y equals the square root of x looks like this. But it's being shrunk vertically and then turned upside down. Well, this is turned upside down. 
but it's not stretched. This, this is the only thing it could be. Here you've got the basic graph turned upside down and then um, shrunk, shrunk. This is a shrink there. Turned upside down and then shrunk. So I'm going to say D. Yeah, all right. The one fourth shrunk it. Okay, now here we have the basic graph y equals x squared, and that's the first question of all these alternatives. Start with the graph of how do you know? How do you know? The answer is, let me make this bigger. How do I know by looking at this what the basic graph is? Well, here's the x, and there's the square, so it's x squared. Now we have to ask ourselves, what's going on here? The best thing to do is take this argument, x plus 4, set it equal to 0, solve for x. You'll get x equals negative 4. Negative means you're going to go to the left. 4 units. So we have to look for where over here it says shift the graph four units to the left, right here. B is going to be our answer. So start with the graph of y equals x squared. So x, x squared. and shift four units to the left. Check answer. Excellent. Oh no, now we're being asked to graph. Here's what you do. You know what the graph of y equals x squared looks, at, looks like by now. It's a parabola. Here's the icon, but all you have to do is hover your mouse over each of these tools, and it tells you what tool it is. So here it says in small letters, the X squared tool. Okay, click. Now, click the graph to plot your graph. Actually, all I have to do is click anywhere. This is the basic graph of y equals x squared on this 20 by 20 graph. How I shift this to the right position, the correct position, is I know that plus 4 is going to be a shift to the left 4 units. I already worked that out. So this is a horizontal shrink, no, horizontal shift to the left four units. I click, here's horizontal shift. I click on the, the uh, slider and I go to where it says negative 4.00. Then I save and I check my answer and yes says go to the next one. This is what you do. Okay. Ah, now here you have two transformations. You have g of x equals one fourth times the absolute value of x and then a minus seven on the outside right side. Well, this minus seven is a vertical shift down seven units, and this one fourth, positive one fourth in front, means you're going to shrink the graph by a factor of one fourth. And then you're going to fill these out, and then you're going to graph. One third minus two, same thing shrink 
vertical shrink, vertical shift down. Now, here we have, and let me write this larger for you. This is number six in your homework. G of X equals negative parentheses X minus eight to the third power. This is outside. This is inside, so it's argument. And in there, you've got a minus eight. So you've got X minus eight equals zero. Add eight to both sides. you get X equals positive eight. So go ahead and write your plus eight. After all, it's just for you. That means you're going to go to the right because horizontal movement is in the argument. Move to the right eight units. This minus sign on the outside means you're going to reflect across the X axis, which means you're going to turn it upside down operationally. That's what it means. All right, so we need to find an alternative here, A, B, or C, or D, that says reflect across the x-axis and then shift horizontally to the right eight units. So here's a shift right eight units. And this is start the graph of f of x equals. Ah, it's also going to ask us what is the basic graph? x to the third. Okay, and then it says shift right eight units and then reflect across the x axis. A is going to be our answer. x Where'd it go? Ah, there. Cubed and then shift right eight units and then reflect across the x-axis. So that's how you do these. You have not completed it? Okay. Are you sure you want to leave? No. Oh, they're going to look what they're going to make me do. Now the value, this is x to the third. X to the third looks like this. And you would have gotten that from yesterday. X to the third looks like this, but if you don't remember, just hover X cubed tool. Okay, now what you do is you click anywhere. This is going to be Y equals X to the third in its home position. To move it, in the correct way, you're going to have to come over here where it tells you your different possible coatings. Okay, you know that you're going to have a horizontal shift, which is down here, a horizontal shift to the right eight units, and a reflection across the X axis. Click the box. Now you've only got those two transformations. So click save. And then click check answer. Woohoo!
So this is how you do your homework. And you see that none of this is overwhelmingly difficult. Here we have a number greater than one multiplying and on the outside of the function. So this is going to be a vertical stretch. And then on the other outside, this is going to be a vertical shift down five units. So it would be a good idea to put all of these transformations we talked about on different flashcards and then have all the flashcards next to you <coughs> while you do the homework. <coughs> okay, here. You're going to have a reflection across the x-axis. You're going to have a vertical shrink. And you're going to have a horizontal shift to the left two units. You want to be able to read these transformations like I just did. And here we have another one. And here, here we have three transformations. What are they? Let's look. Three transformations. This is number 12, your last problem in this homework. Number 12, you are going to have a reflection across the x-axis. Well, let me write it larger for you just in case someone can't see it. g of x equals negative x minus 5 squared plus 7. Okay, so the basic function is y equals x squared. or h of x equals x squared. They actually tell you that. Okay, now you're going to have a vertical, a vertical reflection or reflection across the x-axis. And this is a vertical shift down, uh, up, a vertical shift up seven units. And then X minus five is in the argument. If you can't remember, if you cannot remember which way to go, you take the X minus five, set it equal to zero, add five to both sides, solve, solve it in other words. That's a plus five, that's positive. So you're going to go to the right, a horizontal shift to the right five units. Got to be careful when you spell that. And now you're ready to fill this out and then fill it out again when you graph. If you graph, I don't think you do. I think this is all there is to this one. So. Alright, shift it. Okay, 
you, sometimes you have to read them first to see which kind of shift. Left or right? We're going to go to the right. Five units. Then reflected across the X axis. And shifted up. Seven units. And that's all there is to that one. So we actually got done. I thought we couldn't possibly do all this in the time allowed, but we could. My goodness, it must be a miracle, a time miracle. Um, I know you've got questions. OK, how could you not? This seemed impossible to me when I was a student, how could I ever learn that much? And the answer was flashcards. That's what my teacher told the class way back in the dark ages, way back in the cave, right? Way back in the cave when I was studying math, she said, make flashcards. Of course, for us in the cave, it would have been make flash rocks. All right, and then have your rocks beside you as you're doing your homework. We've come a long way. But it will help you. In the beginning, you won't know it. You'll have to constantly be looking at the cards. You'll have to constantly be looking at the question helps, but then you'll learn it. OK, let me tell you about Monday. The test is next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Just like always, your very last chapter test, exam three. Um, on Monday, we're going to go over any questions you've got on the practice exam. So be sure to do the practice exam over the weekend. Over and over again because all of the questions on the real exam are taken from the practice exam and the practice exam gives you more credit than the homework does. Something to keep in mind. So Monday we'll go over the practice exam, whatever your questions are. OK, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you make your flash rocks. <laughs>